In this video, we're going to be talking about glycogenolysis, which is the lysis, so the breaking of glycogen. And glycogen is a macromolecule, so a big sized molecule made by many uh, units of glucose, even thousands of molecules of glucose bond with an alpha 1 4 type of bond. And glycogen also has branching points. It's got, it's got many of these points um, when, in which the bond is alpha 1, 6. So the carbon 1 of a glucose molecule is bond with the carbon 6 of another one. The fact that glycogen has a lot of branching points makes it so that the glycogen molecule ends up by having a lot of Redu of non-reducing terminals and just one reducing terminal which usually bond to a protein which is used for the synthesis at first of glycogen from glucose. Now as you can see in the picture over here there's an alpha 1 6 bond which is the origin of the branching points and then all the other bonds are alpha 1, 4, which the name has got to do with the conformation of the carbon and the uh, oxidrilic group and the hydrogen bond to that specific carbon. Then the, the red molecule of glucose is a non-reducing terminal, which will then be attacked by enzymes when in the real process of glycogenolysis. Now just to give you an idea of how a glycogen molecule looks like, this is a picture I got from Wikipedia in which you can see in the center it's there's a protein which is glycogenin which uh, was used as primer for the formation of this macromolecule and you can see all the branching points and the non-reducing uh, ex extremities of the branches in this molecule. Now glycogen is present in, um, in mainly in the liver and in muscle cells. Nerve tissues has almost no glycogen. In the liver it, uh, it is about 8 to 10 percent of the of the weight of the liver so that's about 100 120 grams of weight with, but this happens only uh, immediately after having eaten so when the glucose levels in in the blood are pretty high after a period in which you don't eat the the glycogen lowers uh, in quantity and after one day of diet it goes practically to zero so in muscle cells and in the liver what happens is that glycogen is broken down by uh, glycogen phosphorylase which is an enzyme which um, catalyzes a pretty amazing reaction it breaks the sugar bond between the alpha 1 for a bond between the molecules of sugar and what it does it it breaks it with an inorganic phosphate so you end up by having glucose uh, just that it's glucose one phosphate so it's already got a phosphate group which will then be in uh, necessary for um, for glycolysis and for the synthesis of new ATP. So it's actually saving energy by doing this. And then there's another enzyme which uh, switches places to uh, the phosphate group and moves it to the carbon 6. So as you can see in the picture over here, you're going to have uh, glucose 6 phosphate, which can then enter the glycolytic process if it's in the muscles. If it's in the liver, the phosphate group gets removed and you have by another enzyme and you have again glucose which can go now in the bloodstream and reach uh, other tissues which need uh, glucose and which need energy in that moment. 
that's mainly brain tissue and um, muscular tissue. Now this happens only when you need a lot of energy immediately and you don't have enough uh, already in the bloodstream. So there are certain hormones which are going to catalyze the lysis of glycogen and these are like uh, glucagon which is secreted by the alpha cells in the Langeron uh, islands in the pancreas or uh, also by ad adrenaline it's, it's gonna catalyze uh, the lysis of glycogen and all other hormones which have hyperglycemic properties which means they have the property to increase the lever the level of sugars in your blood and now the picture we're looking at is the picture of the molecule of glucose you can see uh, six atoms of carbon at every uh, point of the, of the molecule and this molecule travels in the bloodstream and then is uh, captured by the cells throughout specific uh, transporters throughout their membrane which are mainly uh, they're called glute, glute 1, 2, 3, and 4. And then there's also other types, and they have different properties according to the tissues in which they are found. And now we're going to see a molecule, which is uh, a protein. It's uh, glycogenin, which, as I said before, is the primer of, um, of, of the synth for the synthesis of glycogen. Now what a primer is, it's, it's a molecule which helps the, the synthesis at first of uh, the molecule, in this case of glycogen. And the reason for the existence of primers is that not all the enzymes can just work up on a molecule out of nothing. They need a place to start on. And so that's the reason why primers exist. Now, uh, the whole point of glycogenolysis is to increase the blood levels of sugar, to increase the amount of glucose in the bloodstream. So, uh, in this image, you can see other ways to obtain the same result. And like all these ways, work together to increase the level of glucose in the blood. And then in the muscle cells or in the nerve cells, Glucose enters these cells and then it's phosphorylated.